How's it going guys? Aaron here. I wanted to bring you another video today, this time a uh, tutorial style, style video. I know when I was setting up my server, I was trying to figure out a way to serve a local website um, to my local network. And I've been using this program called AMPS. It's by Softaculous. It allows you to run the Apache server, MySQL, MySQL, and also it allows you to run uh, you know, your PHP scripts so that you can host, let's say, a WordPress site or something like that uh, and manage it very easily. Use the Softaculous installer uh, to basically do one-step installs of various types of uh, content management systems. And then I figured out a way where you can actually assign um, the site so that it can actually be viewable on the local network. And I'm sure there's more uses for it, but when I was looking through the documentation, it was a little tough to find. I did seem to figure it out, and I wanted to share that finding with all of you. So as you can see, I just have to wake it up a little bit. I have my server um, screen sharing up and running. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna cut to my uh, screen recorder and uh, give you a little tutorial. Hopefully you'll find this helpful. All right, guys, before we officially start this screen recording, I just wanted to preface uh, this section of the video by explaining that I've used this AMP software for local development on a PC laptop that I have. I was using that just so that I could personally develop a couple sites and then test it locally. I was using the emulators built into Firefox and Chrome, uh, but as I soon found out, they are not extremely accurate. Um, or very accurate at all to some of the mobile devices like iPhone. So to get a better idea, I wanted something that could serve the local network so I can actually test them on the devices themselves without showing them off to the entire um, you know, World Wide Web. So just wanted to give you that preface. If you want to experiment a little bit, you can just on your local network. You can, use, you can set up a website at localhost or depending on, I guess, the way your computer is set up, 127.0.0.1 as the IP address. I think that links back to your local host on your device. Um, or you can set it up in a subdirectory of uh, said local host. All right, so back to the video. Let's wake up my server. And so on Mac, this is a Mac tutorial. When you first open up AMPS, it seems to ask for an administrative password to start the Apache server. So you're going to want to type that in. I've already done so. And I've also written to AMP support to see if there are ways uh, that they could modify the software. Uh, but maybe that's a video for another time. So I already have it open. I'm just going to click on the AMPS icon. It's going to show you this little tiny control panel summary section. And see uh, here you can see that Apache is enabled, MySQL is enabled, and PHP, uh, it's version 7 that I have enabled. All right, so I'm going to click on this little home icon. Click on that. It's going to open up the AMPS panel. Uh, under your local host, as you can see in Chrome here. And first thing you're going to want to do is to add a domain. Now, this is so that you can easily find your website on the local network. Um, and so what I found to be easiest, uh, especially at least on Mac, on the Mac side of the server, um, you can click on System Preferences, go into Sharing, and set up a nice computer name so that you get this little accessible all right pseudonym if you will uh, so that this computer is searchable uh, in a sense on the local network so that the local host almost is uh, externally available at this address if you will so what you do is you create the computer name you take this this in this case I named it free at last I could talk more about that in the future, but it's named free at last and it's dot local because it's a computer. All right, so now I'm going to close it out. And this doesn't require any purchasing of domains, rerouting, anything like that. Just nice and free as long as you have the hardware. Um, and then you want to go to add domain. And see, this is where the tutorials seem to go wrong online. And they talk about uh, not adding to host file, which seems to work fine. That's that's okay. You can disconnect that. But they seem to leave the add-on checked. And I think this is a mistake because when I was playing around with this, I could not get it to work with the add-on checked. It seemed to show basically the domain as being the domain slash and then the same domain as a subdomain rather than installing it properly. So what I did was I unchecked this, parked 
a new domain and the domain is going to be called the name of that shared computer so in this case free at last dot local and then you would select the domain that it's going to point to now I've already created free at last dot local but if you hadn't created uh, a dome you know a, a parked domain that points to your local address which would be in, in this case I guess 127.0.0.1 which I'm pretty sure is generic um, then you would create you would type it in here and point it there and I've already done that um, so I'm gonna skip this step you'd hit add domain and then what should happen if I click app home is it once that's created you can click to manage domains click on manage domains and you'll see your local host right here and you should see the name of the shared computer over here whatever the name of the computer is dot local and it shows the path as being the same as that of the local host and then it shows it's parked not add-on alright here's where you could remove it there's probably other ways to modify it but this will do alright so once you do that uh, it's very common to host WordPress sites I'm sure you could do this with other types of platforms but I'm going to talk from my experience let's say you choose WordPress you click on WordPress and now what I like to do so that I can serve multiple sites without having paying for multiple domains or getting too crazy is I just install them at um, you know subdirectories of a particular domain or localhost in this case uh, TAI uh, is a subdomain of free at last dot local and so that's where I have one site located today I'm going to create just a blank site and I'm going to install it at a different uh, subdirectory just to show you so what we did is we just as a summary apps home add domain the name of your computer with no spaces or actually more importantly than trying to figure that out on the fly system preferences sharing whatever is listed after this colon remember this you can probably just copy it copy come back here and paste it in here uncheck this box because uncheck is for parked do that make sure it's pointed at the local host more than likely it's going to say 127.0.0.1 you can leave this unchecked unless you've configured I guess an SSL and then you can probably uncheck this. I don't know what would happen if you left it checked, but it seems that the documentation to sort of attempt to do what I'm suggesting uh, recommends that you uncheck it. Um, so I just leave it unchecked and it seems to work. All right, and you hit add domain. You can obviously, excuse me, you can go back to the home, check manage domains, and confirm that that went through properly. It's pointing to the same path and it's showing it's parked. Anyway, here's your host file contents and you can see um, I'm not sure why this is here. I think this is defaulted, but this is your local host, and it shows that the IP is the local IP. So you'd go into WordPress, let's say, right? Install, you'd click. And this is really nice because uh, this software, AMPS, it includes this Softaculous installer, so it's really simple, like I said. You choose the protocol. In this case, I'm just going to make it real simple. This would mess it up, the www. This is really only good if you, I guess, pay for a standard registered domain. Then you could configure it this way. Other than that, just stick with the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. Um, leave off the HTTPS. This is going to mess up your site unless you have an SSL configured, I'm pretty sure. So just leave it as standard. Choose domain. Choose the park domain that you just created, in this case, free at last, dot local. And then here's going to be that subdirectory of that domain. So in this case I'm just going to call it WP for WordPress. You can leave this stuff as defaulted. I'm going to name the website my local network website. YouTubers only. And that includes you guys, of course. All right. And here, uh, it gives you a default admin username and admin password. I believe this is for um, actually logging into WordPress, the dashboard. 
Um, you can customize this, make this a stronger password, and you can make a more complicated username, but you can change, I'm pretty sure you can change this stuff later. I'm just leaving this as default. You could probably change that as well. I'm going to leave the language. No plugins for now. Advanced options, I'm going to leave off. It's just a defaulted database name. Leave that stuff off for now. Leave off the theme to make it default. Click install and watch how fast this is. In like three seconds, you're going to see, and in a snap, it's done. And now you can actually view the site this local site, just click on here. It's going to take you very quickly to this site and take a look at this. This is the defaulted theme. I believe it's 2017 WordPress theme and it shows my local network website, YouTubers only. And if you click through, it includes a little bit of defaulted content in this um, base install. But if you click on something, it'll take you to that page and it shows as a sub, you know, folder, subdirectory, or sub page or page on this website and you'll see free at last at local slash WP slash and here is the page information this is the um, forget what you call it um, it basically is the type of link uh, setup it's permalink excuse me that's the word for permalink configuration so that you can customize I suppose but this is how it was set up by default and this is the page I guess hello world alright so I'm going to X that out and of course to remove uh, said site all you have to do is go into WordPress on the side you can scroll down find the site you want to get rid of uh, try to back up your sites that is probably another uh, tutorial for another day but in this case we know we don't want the WP sites so I'm going to go over hit the X remove make sure these are all checked remove 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 installation okay it's not reversible that's okay and now, if you wanted to remove the domain, you can click on the Home button. You can go to Manage Domains, and you'd be able to hit Options, Remove. I don't know if it, Delete, excuse me. I don't know if it asks you for another confirmation, but you can go ahead and do that. In this case, I'm not going to bother. Um, but there's your little tutorial. So, And that is accessible on other computers. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you guys that it's accessible. So I'll just recreate that real quick. Install at last. I'm just going to leave everything super defaulted except the, the name. Thank you autofill. That's a little bit better. Scroll down to the bottom. Install. Give it about three seconds on this machine, at least it's pretty quick, even though it's on the older side. And now it'll be available at this domain. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know if I can copy it uh, across clipboard, so I'm, I'm going to visit this site on my other computer. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to cut to that. Oh, not that. Go over here. WP. Enter. And this, remember, this is on my local computer, not on the server. This is on my iMac from 2009. So this is not directly hosting it. It is collecting it off of the wirelessly connected um, Mac Mini server that I gave you guys a tour of. And you can see my local network website, Computer Dynamo Fans Only. If I click on this, it'll try to go back to the address, the home page, and reload it. You can scroll through it. You can resize it. Look at the beauty of that. You can move it around. And that, of course, is using the power of Spectacle. And uh, there you guys go. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and learned something from it. I'm going to cut back so I can sign off. All right, guys. I hope you learned something from that little screen recording tutorial. I encourage you all to try your hand at setting up your own local network website. Uh, this tutorial should work on other platforms, you know, with slight modifications to the process, but AMPS is cross-platform. I believe it works on uh, Mac, Windows, and even Linux, different distros, I believe, of Linux. So uh, there should be really no excuse to trying it unless you have a better way of doing it. Uh, either way, you can leave your experience down below in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe, of course, to get future um, videos as quickly as possible. Write to your inbox, if you would. And uh, until next time, follow your passions, follow what makes you happy, and I'll see you later.